in a world of imagination and mystery. You alone write your destiny. Will you be good? Will you be evil? Neutral? Chaotic? Will you be lawful? When it comes to adventure, it's all on the table. Welcome back, all you out there in Twitch land, to the Transverse, all on the table, side quests. I am DM Charlie of DM Charlie Gaming, the host of today's game, The Wreckers, written by the co-founder of Arcadre, DM Lauren, an absolutely kick-ass uh, trans woman and pro dungeon master, and one of my very, very dear friends. I am flattered and honored that she gave me permission to run this for the marvelous people of the Transverse. All of them are lovely players, and I am absolutely thrilled to be here. Quick recap if you are only now joining us after our break. The party had joined the sea's favor, a cog chartered by a nobleman cartographer, Zedri the Elder. We met the party as they set sail through the Elgin Archipelago, narrowly moving through the channels and islets, uh, inlets of the, of the islands uh, on their way to the Middle Sea. However, they came to a darkened channel where the Tobin Toes lighthouse had strangely gone dark, narrowly avoiding running ashore on the rocks in the gloom. They prevented a second ship from also meeting a similar fate. However, despite their efforts, a third ship that came in the early, early watches of the morning wrecked upon the rocks. Soon after, they heard the sounds of combat and murder from the shore. Rowing ashore in the early dawn light, they discovered criminals, otherwise known as wreckers, moving amongst the wreckage and bodies of the unfortunate sailors that had been swept ashore in the darkness of the night. Being the brave heroes that they are, they drew weapons and quickly set in and put pay to all of the wreckers but one who thought better of dying at the hands of heroes and fled somewhere inland. That is where we left off. That is where we are going to return as we rejoin the Wreckers. We can bring all our players back. Please, Justice Renee. All yeah, right. It is. Perfect. Welcome back, everyone. Do you have a good break? I think so. The best. Great. Let's move I'm, through. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I think I had to go get some Starlight. I just found this. I get to drink Starlight. So there we go. Ooh, I'm drinking good old tap water. Yeah, uh, I'm, 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 drinking, I'm drinking root beer. <laughs> Filtered fridge water. Root beer sounds good. I think I'm getting a root beer after we're done with this. So hurry up and finish this. Hurry up and finish this. <laughs> Coca-Cola, you should do, give us money. I just, I just gave you Not a sponsor. <laughs> Not right. a sponsor. Could be a sponsor. That would we be an awesome sponsor, you. but... <laughs> Wouldn't it though? Except for you know, can you imagine? It's Capitalism. like I, I drink a healing potion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my diet coke greater healing potion. Uh, Speaking of healing, I think there's uh, two of two of us in the party that could probably use a little bit of healing. Well, you better hope things work out for you, huh? <laughs> Not me, right? <laughs> right on. Let us reintroduce the players and their characters before we get stuck back into the action. Starting on the left of the screen, we have Ara being played by Juniper. Tell us about your character and yourself, please, Juniper. Well, I'm I'm Juniper, pretty regular player on the All on the Table uh, and All on the Table side quests segment here on the Transverse. And Ara is our little... Uh, dwarf life cleric who's uh here with the the party because uh she wanted to go on a journey in this archipelago with her her good friend uh to possibly sp uh, spread the the news of her goddess around perfect nothing quite like going out and doing some missionary work in role playing how about sin tell us about sin please hey, justice uh renee Justice Renee here. I am the mad engineer of the transverse. 
doing anything and everything all over the place. Just putting my hands all over the things. I like to touch everything. Touch, 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 touch. There we go. And um, I am playing Sin. Sin is a half-orc. A stalwart defender of the halls of Sesramir. Sin is here on the ship. She is now crashed and she's she's very much focused on being a stalwart individual and very much carrying forward upon that. Though she doesn't trust Mimio at all. <laughs> and why? Mimi, why don't they trust Mimio? I couldn't tell you personally because as Mimio, I love Mimio, right? Uh, <laughs> Mimio's a half elf ranger from a far off distant land and she just really wanted to get away um i love what it says in her bio i have different assumptions from those around me concerning personal space like i just want to have my own space to do my own thing and uh i've got a strong code of honor or sense of proprietary that others don't comprehend people just don't get me right I'm on an adventure and uh, I stole away on this ship that I thought would be taking me to promising lands. And it turns out I just ended up doing a lot of free work on a ship for no pay. <laughs> and now I'm being charged with going in and fighting people and trying to figure out how to light up a lighthouse, which I have no experience with. But I'm fascinated by the beauty and wonder of this new land. I can tell you that. You know, when you say that about Mimio having to do work for no pay, it reminds me of that line from Ghostbusters. Ray, you, you've never been out of academia. The private sector, they expect results. <laughs> All right. And Asher, tell us about Lance. Lance is a sellsword there to provide their services, make some coin, uh, trying to forget their time in a terrible war. Um, and Mimio, I want to say, I mean, is it free labor if you were a showa and didn't actually pay to be on the ship? I mean, it. Look, they should be paying me. <laughs> I mean, remains to be seen. Remains to be seen. <laughs> I could have just said I was an employee. <laughs> right. All right, folks. Let us get back into it. We left you on the beach, standing in the ruinated, bloody sand that has been stained by your foes. One of the wreckers, one of those criminals, has fled inland. You look to the wreckage, most of the goods having already been hauled away, right? wagon tracks leading away from the beach. Of the corpses of the sailors, you see one is weakly moving, clearly unconscious, just What does the party want to do? And we will get rid of spiritual weapon, the magical kitty cat. Aww. Aww. <laughs> that was giving me so much comfort. Yeah, uh, well, it, it does it does dispel on its own after after a couple minutes. So love Ara. the kitten, but not a huge fan of the crab. I see how it is. All right, this person <laughs> over here needs some help. The chat loved the crab. Look, I've never heard anyone complain about oh somebody gave me kittens. Crabs, on the other hand, <laughs> oh no, they were helpful crabs. Helpful crabs. <laughs> um. Well, I, I I think my first thing to do, be being of you know, life cleric origin, is I'm gonna make sure the the health of the, uh, you know, the people who were just fighting are is you know, well and good, and you know maybe wrap up wounds as necessary. We have, um, yeah. Hey, Ara, Ara, there is a survivor that is struggling to breathe over here, is having some real issues. If we're gonna try and find out some more information over here, we may want to take care of that. I, I didn't even see that, I had it scrolled down. Ah, I see. Well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go over to, to the survivor and uh, see if I can de determine what currently ails them. <laughs> All right, give me a medicine check to determine what currently ails the sailor. 
I mean, other than the fact that, you know, they've been in combat delay, I mean, like, like specifically what I can do to, to, to assist them. Gotcha. Um, yes, he looks like he is half drowned. He is battered and bruised. A myriad of small cuts adorn his body and face. His skin is ashy gray. And you can tell as he lays there in the gently lapping surf that um, there's probably a touch of hypothermia as well. Well, thanks, Ara. I couldn't tell that he had been attacked by brigands. You know Would what? You... While 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 they're doing this, can I be doing something else? Absolutely, you can be doing something else. Yeah, great. Because while they're concerned with the person's health or whatever, I'm robbing the other dead bodies. <laughs> I'm looting. Because oh. are you are you, are you trying to keep this secret from the rest of the party that you're doing this? Are you doing it like right blatantly in front of us? I'm uh, curious. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty blatant about it. I mean, it helps that they're certainly distracted. Two of them are, are looking over there and working on that person, but uh, Lance yeah. is just I, just staring you down. I like. just I just want to do a little resource management here, as all. Alright, pick a body. Pick a body. What is Lance doing while Ara and Sin approach the one survivor, and Mimeo uh, is trying to surreptitiously like I'm not doing anything. Oh, my boots untied next to corpses. I still don't know why I can't click this thing. Sorry. Yeah, Lance. Be. Lance had hung back, still uncertain of Try Mimeo. Oh, and, I can move uh, my person now. Just go. very clearly seeing the looting, and it's just like, <sighs> like not gonna stop, but very clearly annoyed. All right, all right. Do you say anything to the to the ranger? I feel like the disapproving looks. I I can perceive that. And I turn around and notice you noticing me. And I'm like, what? They don't need this anymore. Lance is just like, clearly you've never (laughs) never been in battle before in this way. Just like very disapproving. Perfect. Mimeo, as you loot through the body, give me an investigation check as you... (laughs) Pat the body down to see what Mm. you find. You are disappointed to find that the body has already been looted. You can see where, like, there is a a tan mark where a ring has been removed. The pockets are torn out. You can see slash marks on the clothing where maybe pockets have been cut open. And the feet are bare. The boots and stockings have been removed. Whoever picked over this body did so in a very complete and professional fashion. And as your eyes sweep over the remaining corpses of the sailors, you realize every single one of them has been looted and picked over uh, by some rapacious foes. Moving to the two with the survivor, Ara and Sin, the body, he's laying there cold in the surf. What do you do to revive him? I'm going to stabilize him with Spare the Dying just to make sure he's, you know at least able to survive the next couple minutes. Long enough to answer questions. I understand. Yes. All right. The eyes kind of flutter open and he coughs and a thick treacle of seawater comes splouting out of his lungs. (laughs) Uh, What? Oh, how can it be that I'm alive? Oh, Oh, faith. Oh, Bless you, bless you, Madam Dwarf, and you, oh, ye gods, you're a bigot. Oh, oh, I, oh, what, what happened? Um, did you chase those looters and wreckers away? Oh. One of them ran off. The rest have been disposed of. Oh, I, 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 I thank you, I. I, uh, when we, when we crashed onto the rocks, we were attacked by, oh, well over a dozen of the bastards. As we were fighting and I was laying here, I, I feigned dead before I succumbed to the, to the cold and passed out. Before I did, though, I, I saw they was loading our cargo into carts and they were responding to one of their number. I think the leader, they kept calling him. 
Ferg. Oh, but I think you. I, I, oh, I, I'm feeling strong enough. I, I think I might be able to pick my way inland and find a village or town and, and get settled. I, I, oh, but I thank you for saving me life. I probably would have froze near to death laying here in the water as I was. <laughs> Cool, so are we going to go check out that uh, lighthouse yet? <laughs> <laughs> he, he blinks at you and his chat box goes blank. You know, <laughs> uh, you know I, I'm... Oh, actually, I am the leader of this group, aren't I? So I step forward and I'm like, okay, I've got this all under control now. Sir... You go into the town, and uh, we wish you well, and we've got stuff to do. He he nods and picks himself up, and you can see him kind of, I, 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 I thank you. And he's looking around, and he's looking at the bodies of his of his friends and, and crewmates, and he's you, you get the sense that he's probably going to, like, uh, see to them being interred or do some stuff, but he's a sailor. He's used to a hard life and he understands that you are going to chase after those criminals that did this to his ship and crew yeah that's totally part of the plan and then I give a look to Lance like see I got this Lance just shakes their head and walks over and flips a gold piece to the sailor you're gonna need some strong drink tonight (laughs) I, 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 I thank you. I thank you, warrior. I, I, I thank you very much. And then you see him look up and down the beach and realize that there's nothing for miles. And he's, oh, had to be a sailor. Had to be a sailor. All right. Does the party head inland? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. See, I was part of the conversation. All right. The you head inland up over the rise out of the dunes, and you see very close to the shore where the wreckers, where the ship was wrecked, is a small fishing village. I will move you to the village. Mm-hmm. This is a large map. I will put you. The fishing village is but eight small houses and two larger buildings closer to the beach. All of the buildings are thatch-roofed with wattle and daub walls. Scattered around the village are several drying racks full of fish, a few boats, and some fishing nets strung up for repair. Placing the party onto the map. Placing the party onto the map. Stand by. Stand by. Welcome, party. Oh. As you approach, you see the one wrecker that fled from the battlefield. He steps out of the door of one of the huts of one of the larger buildings, holding an elderly woman with his cutlass to her throat. He shouts, Don't come any closer! What do you do? Can somebody provide a distraction long enough for me to pop off a shot with an arrow? Mm, uh, give me I don't have anything second. that would be give, distracting give that wouldn't be taken as a threat. I can, you know, you know. I'm hey, you for- guys! There we go! <laughs> Hello, everyone! We're ready to go! Sin, maybe, maybe take a step forward? Yeah, I step forward. I move you- closer. Use use that uh, orc charm to uh, make one step, two steps <laughs> to draw you draw the don't attention. Don't come any closer. And the old woman's like, "Oh, just hush, you son of a bitch. Let me go." <laughs> I, I'm saying, don't come any closer. Uh, you're all like you boys and your swords. She just I say, "Hey now, hey now, hey now." It's been uh, enough bloodshed. There's been enough violence for a lasting us a lifetime. I know I have scars. I am sure you have scars inside, not just on the outside, of course. We got all got scars on the outside, but I'm talking about the scars 
that are inside. I am sure you have some scars inside. Do you really want that scar of killing an innocent old lady to create such an internal monologue of turmoil and <laughs> horrific nightmares for the rest of your life? I, so I'm, 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 yep. I'm within uh -huh. range, actually, to cast Guiding Bolt on that guy, so maybe... We could we we could see what happens there. <laughs> I don't know what do y'all think. Sin is trying to persuade the wrecker, so we're gonna have Sin make a persuasion roll. But this all happens simultaneously. So are you all waiting to see the effects of Sin's monologue um, yeah. of the conversation before you act? Are you waiting? Like, so you're setting up a trigger, okay? So you've got uh -huh. your, guide, your guiding yep. bolt ready. Yep. They, it's going to go off on what? If he acts more aggressively or what? If if he, if he yeah, if he if he acts uh, aggressive in a way that looks like it will harm the older lady. And okay. I'm on standby to fire off a shot of an arrow as soon as the old lady is clear. All right. I mean, and... therapy cost is is extremely expensive. You don't want to spend <laughs> your money on that. I'm surprised to see a half orc with such a vocabulary. <laughs> Don't be. Well, I, you you guys may be hearing that this now, but he's all, of course, just hearing, uh, you know, grunts. So. <laughs> like, why is he? Cr why are they crushing rocks at me? Um, what is Lance doing? <laughs> Lance is just kind of watching the situation, kind of sees the blood. Uh, the others are got lined up, letting Sin take this, but also keeping an eye out for an opening uh, if Ara and Mimio need assistance. All right. So we're going to do the persuasion check, and if it appears to have failed, Ara and Mimio in tandem are letting off an arrow shot and a guiding bolt, and Lance is standing ready to assist as needed. Understood. Sin, give me that persuasion roll. Against the wrecker as he stands there holding oh, that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he stands there and he grips the old woman tighter by the shoulder, holding his sword. I don't know the magic called therapy. I, what are you speaking of, you, you darn orc? And, and scars. We all have scars. I, I, I said don't come any closer. However, he does not seem to be making any sort of further aggressive action towards the old woman. You may make an insight to see if you can figure out what's going on in his head. Or you may shoot him. I don't care. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll go ahead and, and use the use an insight roll. Please do. All right. You are able to determine by his body language and the way he's acting that he does not want to kill the old woman, but again, he doesn't want to be killed by you. You can tell that he's very afraid, but he's the way he's hesitating. If he was going to do it, he was going to do it by now. You believe? Yeah. Mm. Um. I say. I say. Put the bow down. I'm. I'm. Uh. Definitely not firing. Um. Unless he harms the woman. So. Right. I. I talk right. to animals, not people. I'm just waiting for orders. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I. I specifically say to Mimio. <laughs> Put the bow down for now. I think we can get through this without violence. Uh, Fair enough. And then, and then directed. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see. Um, do, does the old lady look all right, or is she? Uh... <laughs> she looks pissed off. Really, like annoyed. Like she's got bread she, she's in the She's annoyed. Oven and... Not. She's not yeah. scared though. No. She. She looks like she can handle herself. You know, like she's just like, uh, who's got time for this BS? All right, I'm gonna. Um, I think. Hmm. I'll let somebody else go first. I'm gonna take a minute to think. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's still. Uh, I said, don't come no closer. Oh, you're just. Uh... Okay. Well, in that that case, then I will step forward and say, we're here to. Uh, put an end to these nasty wreckers that you may or may not be aware of. 
uh, we saw a guy come through here and we're just straight up trying to help you people. So let's put the weapons down and solve this with Taki. Yeah, he's he's very much the one who fled the battlefield. You recognize Oh, that is that guy. Shit, yeah. he needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That sounds like another persuasion attempt. Go ahead and try to persuade. Hopefully you roll better than a... Better than we'll see. Oh, <laughs> my Lanta! Uh, oh. Oh, I wait, told that you. Was, uh, that was Mimi rolling that. Okay, yeah, Mimi tried it. All right, perfect. Yeah, he's like... I think it might be I, crap time again. It's like you sound like you're babbling at crabs. I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> it's okay, um, Mimi. We'll. You we can we see can, the you know, white we'll around his eyes as he looks around wildly at the four of you. <sighs> okay. Well, then, I think I have to just keep moving in on him and convincing him uh, to let the hostage go. All right, go ahead and move forward as far as you want and then try another persuasion roll. The entire time, he seems to be getting more and more nervous and anxiety, you can tell, is starting to cover his body as he's starting to break out in a sweat and his head turns more and more frantically, you know, left and right, trying to keep both of you in his field of vision as you approach. Who is going to say what and make the persuasion roll? Or you can just try and intimidate him, you know. Let her yeah. go, or we're gonna do bad things to you. Mm. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk forward along with uh, Mimio just to just and I, I I don't have my weapon out. All right. Very 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 specifically, my shield and is on my back, and my hammer is at my side, so I do not have a weapon out. All right. While I'm approaching. Okay. Well, I certainly still have my bow drawn, and. I am essentially trying to convince them to let the hostage go or uh, we're going to start we're going to start lobbing <laughs> uh, attacks at you. And Lance, you're trying to like trying to stealth around? Yeah, so Lance has taken the opportunity since obviously this guy is focused on the other party members to start slowly making his way around the back of the houses uh, to eventually loop around the larger one behind him. All right, give me a stealth check for your movement behind the houses. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Look, I never said I was... Selfie. All three of you hear a bag of tin cans being banged against the ground from somewhere behind the huts. All right. So you move forward. Ara is moving forward in a calming manner. Mimeo, you are moving forward uh, with purpose. And uh, Sin, you are again trying to convince, correct? I, I think now is the time that I pull out a little bit of intimidation. All right, let's let's try that. You what go. do you say to intimidate him? Well, I say, you know what? I offered you therapy. You need <laughs> therapy. I can see that you need therapy. You got scars <laughs> right down. Look at your face. I mean, just that <laughs> frown. Turn that frown upside down. If you don't, I mean, we're gonna come in there. You know, my look at how strong I am. Look at how big I am. You know what? I can also create scars on the outside, <laughs> and I'm really good at that as I start moving my sword up and down. The old woman looks up at the wrecker as he has his hand on her shoulder and his sword at her throat, and you hear her say, Oh, she's going to fuck you up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead and make your intimidation with advantage from the old woman's assist. Oh, oops. I ran it before oh. you said that. No, that's that's perfect. That's perfect. I can't he see. looks <laughs> you rolled a nineteen. <laughs> All right. He looks at her, his jaw kinda goes slack, and then he looks down the line of you, Mimeo, Ara, and then it you sin, and you see his mouth say, Oh fuck that and he drops his weapon and hightails it to the north at speed, basically screaming no, 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 no. <laughs> the old woman looks over her shoulder, lets out a gob of spit into the ground, and comes limping forward 
with a wry smile on her face. Well, that was a pretty bit of work, my dears. I, I, I thank you very much. I'm Matilda, the, the village elder. You're not with them, bastards. What what came into the village earlier, are you? Who are you and why are you here? Did he harm you? Oh, no. He's a fool looking for an easy payday. I don't think that one could really harm anyone. He near pissed himself, taking me hostage, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Can you tell me anything you know about the Wreckers? Oh, I, 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 them some bitches. Hey, they, they came into town a couple hours after the sun's, uh, Tobin's toe went dark at just right around sunset. They woke up everybody in the village and forced us into the hall there. And then, uh, about an hour ago, I was looking out the doorway and I saw they pushed a couple of carts up the hill towards the tow itself. And now we're, now we're easily a dozen of the some bitches. They are probably heading up to the lighthouse. It's about an hour inland up on the up on the high promontory in the hills since they're thumb jerks off to the west of the map. Are you are you set to go deal with the some bitches? Oh, yeah, lady, I'm super reassuring. I'm like, me and my team were already planning to go there and check this out. And uh, I've got some ideas for when we're ready to start discussing strategies. Oh, this perfect. is like your team? As we all previously decided back on the ship, yeah. Yeah, all of us decided. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am going to inquire. Um with the lady if they have possibly a village store where I could get some medicine because our party has been a little banged up and might get banged up in the future if scraps with these fellows. She she looks at the seven crude hovels that cluster there on the grass <laughs> before it descends into the dunes in front of the beach and she says village store village <laughs> Obviously, you've never seen a hovel before, have you, girl? All we can sell you is dried fish, although I don't think we'll sell it to you. We'll give you all the fr dried fish that you can carry as, as a thank you for getting rid of these some bitches. But no, we don't have stores. We're a very, very poor little... Our, our, our village is so small it doesn't even have a name. So there's not a pub either. <laughs> oh... What I would do for a quaff of a good ale or a fine brown liquid. I've even remember once having a wine on me wedding night some 62 years ago. Oh, no, no. Although one of the elders makes a fish wine, nasty stuff. It's like drinking oil, but it'll do the job. I'll try it. Fresh <laughs> out. <laughs> And them, them some bitches took our last two casts of it. Oh, how awful. You don't have the knowing of it. I mean, look, we're so poor. And she just kind of gestures, like, <laughs> like, resignedly at, you know, I have just spent the last 78 years amongst these seven buildings. Okay, is is there a place that we can just kind of park for a moment? Because if you'll just hear me out for a second, I want to tell you how my talking to animals skill can come in handy here, too. <laughs> Her eyes kind of glaze over as she's like, uh-oh, one of them. And she's like, you're, you're more than you're, you're more than welcome to, to sit under that bush over there if you're wanting to Take a breather from your exertions on the shore. I know maneuvering attack is supposed to be used in combat, but I feel like I need to use it to defend this poor old woman from Mimeo. Hardly. Hardly. In fact, I, I can just go chill off over here. Inside. All because right. I, I want to try and attract the attention of a bird... That is no doubt nearby because I hear bird sound effects, and I, I wanna, I wanna communicate with this bird to send him toward the lighthouse. 
and and you know ask him what he sees up ahead. There are a myriad of seagulls wheeling about the buildings and fish racks of the mm-hmm. tiny um, the tiny hovel. Feel of course free there to are. Roll a persuasion. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to roll a persuasion as you. What do you say to one of the seagulls? I say, fly to that big tall building. Come back here and tell me what you see in terms of people like me. The big old gull lands a few yards away from you and comes walking forward, the dark beady eyes regarding you greedily. It says one word in response. Mine. One of those kinds of (laughs) (laughs) Do we possibly have a raven? Owl? Uh, I take a osprey? (laughs) Literally sending a tweet. (laughs) Right. Um, Yeah, as you as you uh, like scan the sky and the the flora around the village. Maybe if you were to wait long enough, you might see a different shorebird, maybe a, a waiter or a tern or an osprey. Um, there might be ravens or other other birds further inland, but the seagulls seem to be the predominant avian life form uh, right here in the locality of this small hovel. Not to frustrate you, but it's just the reality of it. It's a small little gray fishing village. Just a little surprised that the crab had a more vocabulary than the bird, but I'm I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for what I perceive to be a more intelligent species. How about that? Gotcha. As, as we move forward. <laughs> all right. All right. Absolutely not a problem. What is anyone else uh, discussing with Matilda? Are you all taking the opportunity for a short rest? I think I'll I think I'll take the opportunity to take a bit of a, a bit of a breather. All right, all right. Yeah. Matilda disappears into the hovel and comes back with a huge basket of dried fish, smelt and bream and shad and all manner of sea creature, dried and smoked, and just dumps it unceremoniously on the grass in front of you. Feel free to eat your fill and take what you want. We've got plenty. And she's, oh, there's a spring. You know, just just not too far out there if you need to refresh your water skins. I have to go back in and see to the villagers. Is there anything else I can answer for you? Nope. Uh, Is is there a path straight to the, the lighthouse? Oh, so you are going to go to the lighthouse. Well, yes, if that's the case... You, if you go to the lighthouse, stick to the trail. If you don't, the piskies will get mad. You don't want to get the piskies mad. And she points to a trail that exits to the west over the bluff on the far side of the tiny village. Okay, yeah, we're definitely heading there next. Uh, Piskies? Yeah, Yeah, that was my quote. What is a piskies? Doesn't matter. Somebody annoying. You, you don't know about the Piskies? Oh, well, the Piskies, they they live up in the glens before Tobin's toe. If you're worried about making them mad, well, well, I'll tell you this. Don't pick the wildflowers and eat whatever they offer you. Don't whistle. They don't like whistling. And you have to be gracious if they offer you any assistance or gifts. They don't like it if you refuse their gifts. Hmm. I'm gonna forget all of that. <laughs> but I'm such a good whistler. Oh my god. <laughs> is like. Oh, are you one of those not enough <laughs> in this world to deal with this party? I really <laughs> like free food. I mean, <laughs> I, I can definitely sympathize with Lance here. I mean, the two of us have known each other for a while. <laughs> you being, you know, employed by a friend of mine. Yeah, uh, Ara and I just kind of exchange a look like. 
Also, uh, you, you're looking a little worse from the where their friend. Maybe I should help patch you up. I think I have some medicine. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Well, yeah, we're taking a short rest, so I'm gonna use some hit dice here. But <laughs> okay, yeah, if if we could get a little um, healed up or prepared or whatever before we move on to the next leg of the journey, that would be nice. Okay. Oh, perfect. <laughs> you may roll up to your hit dice um, to regain hit points. And if you use them, they're not available in a subsequent short rest until yep. you take a long rest. So. Oh, okay, right. I forgot about that. I'm just, I only had two damage. I'm just keeping it. All right. Ignore mm -hmm. that. That roll yeah. didn't happen. There you go. It was, it was a joke. <laughs> Almost full. That's all right. Nice. Uh, I, I, I suggest you roll your at least one hit die, uh, Mimi. <laughs> Okay, how, how do I do that again? So on your on your core uh, page, yes, uh, in the in like the the middle thing where you have like your armor class and your current hit points and all that, yeah. uh, at the bottom of that first block, there's a thing that says hit dice. Oh, hit dice. Okay. Yep. And uh, how you can roll however many of them you wish to. So you just rolled one right there, and you got you, basically you healed ten or max whichever comes okay. first. Okay. <laughs> So I can change my. So you're you're back to full hit points because of that. Cool. Yep. All and right. Everybody so can you... see that. Okay. Yep. You rest and for. Uh... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And then you gotta also gotta make sure you uh, lower your uh, available hit dice by one since you've already rolled one. <laughs> okay. Are oh, we gonna oh. move towards the lighthouse now? I think we've finished our. Is that next? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. I can trace <laughs> for about an um, uneventful hour, uh, knitting some of the wounds and scratches you received at the hands of the wreckers on the shore, and recovering your stamina for the climb into the highlands up to Tobin's Toe. All right. Time for some sound change. Ooh, spooky. Oh boy. Here it goes again. The trail is well trod and maintained as the switchbacks lead you up the side of the bluff. The vegetation consists mostly of scrubbed grass and small trees and bushes. Occasionally, small bunches of wildflowers are seen a few yards from the trail. The steady climb is occasionally interrupted by dips in the trail that lead into little dales that take you out of the side of the sea for a few hundred yards. Refreshing little streams and waterfalls also cross the trail from time to time. Are you doing any investigations or any um, searching, anything like that, as you climb up into the into the dells up the trail? Well, mm -hmm. for Sin, Sin is not that perceptive. It's not that, you know, while they do pay attention, they would like notice anything that came towards them. They're not specifically paying attention, and they kind of go introspective. They can be goofballish, of course, but most of the time, they have to be deep inside of their own thoughts. Well, All we right. were we were told to stay on the trail, so I'll keep an eye out, you know, for anything that might, you know, mean us harm while making sure to stay on the trail. Yes, I'm I'm very perceptive of the landscape and environment and trying to take into account any potential hazards or uh, just what lies ahead. All right. And how about Lance? Pretty much the same, making sure we're staying on the trail and just keeping an eye out for whatever these things that old woman was talking about are. 
All right. Ara, Lance, and Mimeo, each one of you, please give me a survival check as you scan the terrain as you climb up the trail. Oh, perfect. What? Uh, <laughs> I like how the ranger. I like how the ranger rolls the worst. <laughs> Why is the ranger so distracted? What thoughts are filling her uh, filling their head as they climb up the mountain? You know, it was that that old lady from the village. She slipped me a little bit of that fish oil, and uh, well, it's it's taking an, an effect on me, maybe. Feeling a little special. I understand. All right. I have a weakness for new intoxicants and other pleasures of this land, says my bio sheet. <laughs> Ara and Lance, as you climb the trail, you it's easy to find the wagon tracks that lead up the trail um, towards Tobin's Toe. As the trail dips into another dale, you see the trail skirt the edge of a meadow and cross a small stream. Just across the stream is an upended cart. I will move you there. All right. As you approach. Ta-da! Dozens of angry piskies swarm about the cart. Upon seeing you, a larger, more beautiful one comes buzzing forward. Mm. Several more come on her sides. Why did you humans steal our light? Why did you cross our land? Why are humans so mean? <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'm surprised that there are other, like, creatures here, I guess, but uh... <laughs> I rushed in when I shouldn't have. I should have stayed back. And Sure, sure. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. The Piskies are tiny, maybe seven, eight inches each, flying around on little tiny wings, and they buzz around asking incessant questions, referring to each one of you as humans and asking why you stole the light and why are you so horrible and why do you, why do you wreck everything? They seem really <sighs> disturbed. They, they are. They're mad. Do they think that we are the wreckers? Yes. I'm going to assume so. Uh, are we able to convince them otherwise that we are uh, non-threats? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and uh, and talk to them. I was gonna say, them. oh, fearless leader, why don't you try oh. and convince them? Don't you? I don't think I've convinced them of therapy, so I'm gonna step step aside. Oh, <laughs> fearless leader, yes. Yeah, come on. yeah. yeah. I, I'm fearless leader. I have my hands up, and I'm like, listen, everybody, I just want to hear what you have to say because we are uh, strangers to this land. We are not the wreckers. And in fact, we are tracking them down right now. So you're kind of getting in our way. All right, you're saying that to the larger, um, like, pretty little fae? The, the one alpha, the alpha <laughs> one, yeah. All right, all right. Um, change that, something a little more. Ooh, that's kind of dark and ominous. Okay, she comes <laughs> buzzing forward and says, Humans always lie! And at the same time, one comes buzzing by Ara. You're pretty short for a human. I am a dwarf. <clears throat> what's, a, what's a dwarf? The one that you are speaking to, Sin, like pauses in her um, hovering and buzzing in front of you. You say you're not the wreckers? You're not the humans? And who are you? Why are you here? Oh, oh, we're here to relight the flame, the fire that you guys are all about. You, you're you going to return our light? We need it for the dance. And a squeal goes out amongst all of the piskies. Dance, dance, dance. And some of them start humming and like dancing and bobbing in the air. Um, in little uh, rhythmic fashion, and they all seem to get very, very excited. And then realizing there's no music, they quickly die down and look 
angry and grumpy. Yes. Yeah, we're going to do that. We just need to pass through these lands. One comes buzzing over to Mimeo. You know, our ears are pretty pointy for a human. Why are they so pointy? Is something wrong with your ears? Half human. Floats behind Sin. You're pretty green for a human. It comes from my diet. Ah, <laughs> uh, you must eat grass. I see. I see. The queen seems excited that you are willing to relight the light. She's saying, that is good. We need it for our dance. But, but if we we let you pass, you must do us a favor first. Mm hmm. Sure. You are willing to do us a favor in order to pass to restore our light? Well, well we don't get to know what it is before. <laughs> we just have to agree to it. Well, we've been being harassed by a big bully here in the in the dell, and he's quite mean. He eats our wildflowers and captures us and pulls our wings off. And you seem big and strong for humans. We would really like it if you helped us. We would help you in return before you went up to Tobin's toe to restore the light. What is this, a hit job? Yeah, okay. What, what is a hit job? <laughs> you went from, you want us to murder someone? I'm on board. <laughs> well, well, we've got a growing list of things to do here, so if we're going to go merc somebody, let's let's get onward with it. What's with all the violence? Come on, Mimeo. You can reach with him. All right. This is the most introspective of a half orc barbarian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm continually thrown off by the half orc. So the queen, the queen seems excited that you have <laughs> intimated that you would help her with their enemy, and she claps her hands, <laughs> and the group of piskies start playing rather pretty but discordant music that um, really just kind of fills the air and they keep looking to the north expectantly as they all come kind of drifting down like past the level of where you are as though almost waiting expectantly as though they have summoned something a few minutes pass and they continue playing the music and you're not sure what is coming when suddenly over the dell you hear a deep roar if it's going to play you hear a curse you i had that all set up. yeah you hear uh-huh you hear a deep roar And to the north, you suddenly see a large humanoid approach. <laughs> the pisky queen shouts out, There he is! That's Harur! Deal with him! He's a real mean one! The ogre approaches. Anger, rage, and hunger on his face. Hmm. I know, you're all just like, what, what? Well, <laughs> oh, that Ranger. certainly sucks. Where's your bow? The good news is, I have my bow at the ready, and I'm like, oh, great, now we don't have to go to him. He's come to us. Perfect. So I'm right here at the river's edge. I got a nice river between us. I'm liking that. I think I can start firing off shots from here. Absolutely. Alrighty. And I actually rolled just And we've Got already moved into else? combat. Why must we kill everything? Because it's They D &D. told us to. Because it's DD. DD is Combat Simulator 5000. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
because oh. it, yeah, this this is traditional black and white hero stuff. There's and no actually, nuance. I'm gonna do something before I even fire my bow, Adam. Because I, I no, no, I'm not calling any more seagulls. I have a, <laughs> a, a skill called Hunter's Mark that targets somebody. I guess I don't know. It probably provides benefits. Uh, yes, it does. What Hunter's Mark does is it allows a bonuses, a bonuses, a bonus mm -hmm. on your attack roll. Hunter's yeah, Mark. yeah. Mark that uh, sucker. Oh, I guess I gotta click it. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, but I got a one. What does that mean? Now let me double check it. Uh, you deal an extra die six uh, when you hit with your weapon attack. And then you have an advantage on any uh, perception rolls or survival rolls you make to find it. So let me mark him mm. as hit with Hunter's Mark. But that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I stood there and I was like, there he is. Yes, but you are marked. So when you hit him with a bow, when you hit him with your uh, weapon attack, you will get to add an extra die six. However, mm. Mimeo, you are at 12. So we start with Aura. Gotcha. All right. And I am currently in the back of the pack. So. Uh, <laughs> well, you are the slowest. So. Shush. <laughs> I, I, I have heavy heavy armor on. It's, it, it weighs me down. <laughs> and I'm, I have short legs, too. <laughs> All right. So. That's as far as I can move in one turn. All right. Um, and then I think I am going to cast, let me find it first real quick so I can have the, uh, actual description in front of me at all times. Sorry. Oh, no apologies. That's good. Should have had it up earlier. <clears throat> All right, for bonus action, I am going to uh, give our our lovely Sin uh, Shield of Faith. So you have a plus two bonus to AC for the next 10 minutes, so long as I maintain concentration. Favoritism. More like the person who's going to be in the front melee most of the time. <laughs> All right, so that was my bonus action, and then I don't think there's anything I can do with bonus with a main action from this range because I don't think I have any ranged attacks. Do I? I do not. Not that I can use with the one action right now. So that'll be it for my turn. All right, perfect. Half work. The camera moves to you. Yeah. The huge humanoid comes glumping down the trail. That look of just rapacious hunger on the dirty, whiskered face. <laughs> so I reach the bridge and I call, right. you shall not pass. <laughs> Raising my great sword up in the air. I go for the halls of Samazir! The ogre replies with a deep bellow. Ba -ba 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 -ba! <laughs> All right. The huge brute comes trundling forward down the trail. Ooh, he's a fast one. He steps around the ruins, the wreckage. He steps forward. And he reaches over his back and pulls out a javelin and he lets fly at Sin. You're not quite sure what he's trying to say, but you have a feeling that it's probably not complimentary. All right, the javelin goes whizzing by your head and lands with a loud spat, splash in the gurgling stream behind you. 
the ogre mutters, Vimeo. Yeah, this is a perfect opportunity for me to uh, shoot him with my bow. So that's All what right. I'm gonna do. Long bow. Very nice. The arrow sizzles through the air, chunking into the ogre's bicep. Mm. And that's what you get for being an ogre. I say, whoa. 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 All right. Anything else? Getting a bit species this year. <laughs> All right. Lance. Uh. I'm not, clearly not going to be able to make it across the river this time as I'm also wearing uh, heavy armor. So I'm just going to back up uh, thin as best as I can for now. Okay, perfect. Ara. The Piskies in the background start cheering, and you're quite certain you hear a couple of them like placing bets. <laughs> Betting on me, surely. I can get just into melee range. Ooh, brave! <laughs> and I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a a, a two-handed swing uh, at his knee. <laughs> All right. You lash out with your warhammer right at the huge brute's knee. Oh. Your weapon connects with his shin, and you feel like it was a solid hit. However, he looks down and merely lets out a quizzical grunt and doesn't seem to react to the blow. Anything else you would like to do? <laughs> mm. Nope. I think that'll 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 have to do it for this turn. All right, Sin. Well, um, what would be the ability if, um, can I get on top of, well, never mind, that's broken down. So I, um, my rages, I only have two rages, and I think that I need to keep one of those rages for later. So, I right, Sin is going to do the natural barbarian thing, you know, if, if you're born a barbarian, if you're born a half-orc, you're going to do what barbarians do, and you're going to jump right into the melee. All right. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and again, I think we're going to go ahead and use the great sword. And we're going to raise it up and we're going to bring it down at them and totally you cleave Ouch. a huge divot from the turf, sending up a wide swath of dirt and grass that goes pivoting into the sky and lands with a crash. From the pisky crowd behind you, you hear somebody yell, Four! All right. <laughs> the ogre looks down at the pair of you. <laughs> In one of its huge gnarled hands, it lifts up what looks to be half of a medium-sized oak tree. It lifts it, its eyes sweeping back and forth, red and baleful. You can tell its little head, its little mind is going, any, any, miny, mo. The weapon comes singing down, aiming for the dwarf's head. The great club crashes into the corner of the ruined wagon, shattering the wood with a crash throwing flinders and shards up into the sky as one of the barrels explodes, splashing the lot of you with the loamy contents of whatever thick, treacly substance was inside. Mimeo! Uh, yeah, I'm looking to finish this thing off with another arrow. Oh, my sweet summer child, you go right ahead and try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once again, the arrow just sizzles through the air, whacking the huge ogre right in the buttock. His other free hand comes down and pulls the arrow out, and he looks at the end of it quizzically before he sniffs it 
and throws it over his shoulder. Bonus action. <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> hey, every little bit does help. All right. I still don't believe I have bonus actions, so. No problem. Sometimes uh, I'm gonna always ask because <laughs> remember what the players have. <laughs> I'm just gonna start guessing. Right. <laughs> that sounds good. Lance, what do they do, Asher? Uh. Can two players occupy the same five foot? Can I get around where? You, you can pass enemies? through. You can pass you can, through. You can pass through an ally for free. Um, you okay. can occupy occupy the same space if it is a small or smaller token, like a halfling. A dwarf is medium, so you cannot occup, occupy the same five foot square. The same so I can get past them to like over here. Yes, you can. Yes, All you right, can. perfect. Uh, I am going to step up and um, I'm actually going to use um, my maneuver precision attack. Um, All right. Let me well, pause you real fast. Uh, Mimeo, I need you to roll a die six because you have your um, your hunter's mark. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Where do I do that from again? So on the top left of the screen, there's a, there should be a little die icon. You can just roll a d6 there. Uh, not my character sheet. And you need to do it twice. Well, actually, top left of the of the map, like there, uh -huh. there's like a little a little grid there. You can okay. D six in there. D six. There you go. Okay, so that's another. One. So add the first one. So nope. Yeah, because I got the first one. Your spell. It was a one. So it's a next. Oh crud. All of these hit points. There we go. All right. So that's actually a little bit more. That was. A, fairly solid hit. I apologize, yeah. Lance. We are back to you. All right. So I'm going to sweep at it with my long sword, and I have um, an extra D8 using one of my uh, superiority dice. So. All right. Perfect. Well, I hit, <laughs> uh, even without adding in an extra D8. Uh, Very nice. Uh, and it should be ten, uh Plus two, so a total of 12 damage with my... Nice! Your blade lashes out, lashing across the back of the ogre's knees, and you are thrilled to see that wash of bright red blood splash across the green grass as the ogre kind of rocks back, his strings cut, and you notice that he is now kind of wavering on some some wobbly legs as he lets out a howl of surprise and real pain for the first time since the combat was joined. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Whoops, I went right past Dwarf. All right, so um, I can I can I can go over the uh, the upturned wagon. It's just difficult terrain, right? That is correct. So it costs okay. double movement to enter those squares. Okay, so I have just enough movement to get right behind him, you and do. That, that should give us flanking now, right? It does. That is an optional cool. roll, but I do use it. Okay, I wasn't sure if you used it or not. No, it's but. completely cool. Please do advantage. <laughs> cool. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a um, another two-handed swing, uh, and right. I make that with advantage. How do I? Uh should be a toggle. If not, just roll the dice twice. Okay. So. Oh, it's at the top of your character sheet. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you advantage. There advantage we go. I see. I see. I found it. Uh, I already rolled it twice. And one of them is 18, so. The Warhammer lands with a loud crack on the bandy legs of the ogre as he lets out an ear-splitting roar. Roll damage. Nice. You hear bone splinter as he and he starts to favor that one leg, kind of putting all of his weight on his left foot. Anything else, Dwarf? Um, I am going to omit using a bonus action this turn. Perfect. Half orc. Okay. I am. I'm debating. Well, never mind. Um, so, and I don't see anything on here about 
melee. I just see using weapons. So I'll go ahead and use my great sword again. We'll make this right. easy. And I'm going to go ahead and move towards him, and I'm going to hit the leg that he is not favoring, the one that he's using to hold himself up. All right. Oh, boy. Holy goodness, yeah. Your blade yes, woo, the, finally! The columnar chunky muscles of that other leg. Roll damage. Oh, there is a deep cut and the disgusting sound of ripping, flensing flesh as he lets out an ear-splitting screech that causes the piskies to all kind of shudder as he's and he stands there and he seems like he's now wobbling like a tree almost ready to go over it is quite clear that the ogre is in a lot of trouble at this point anything else half work can i jump on him that would be an extra action. Right. So you can try that next next turn. All right. <laughs> he flails about himself just in pure defensive mode, swinging that great club just crazily. I am going to roll a die. Dwarf, you are a one to two. Sin, you are a uh, three, four. And Lance, you are a five, six. A three. The Great Club comes cruising in at the half orc. However, an 11 does not get through your armor class with the, sh uh, the shield of faith around you. He fails to hit as it skids across that magical armor. These radiant sparks go flying. There's a as the magic protects you from the brute's heavy-handed attack. Mimeo! <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to move because it looks like my companions are sort of blocking my line of attack. So right. uh, I move in for a little closer vantage point, And again, I'm going to try and take the final shot. <laughs> yeah. Aww. You're, you're my favorite with all of your optimism. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell it's my first time? <laughs> no. No, you're good. Let fly. Let fly. Elf, okay, let fly. so there's that. Oh, yeah, crit, nat crit. 20. Crit yes. Plus that. Very and then nice. do I have to roll the other yep. thing again? Yeah, roll your hunter's mark. The extra die six. Boom. Holy crud, 14 points. The arrow comes sailing out, sticking right in Harur's neck as he lets out a gargling groan. Blood comes flowing down, deep red, as he staggers back against his will underneath the onslaught. He is rocking and pivoting, his skin turning gray, the poor creature ready to fall. Lance, can you put him down? All right, let's try. No, Lance, reason with him. <laughs> Twelve more damage. Lance, what does it look like as you fell the ogre? Good job, Lance. Yeah. So he's already swaying on his feet, and Lance just kind of comes in again very cleanly. Last kill in and out. Very cold. Very technical. Very nicely done, all of you. And down here, the oh, oh, yeah, you want a huzzah? You deserve a huzzah. Huzzah! There's a huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> all right and with a loud earth-shaking crash the huge brute drops to the turf the pixies all let out a cheer and as you watch you see they're exchanging pebbles back and forth one comes buzzing up all the way around 
You did really well for a tiny human. I won many, many stones because of you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let me clear your... Wait, who did they say that to specifically? To Ara. Oh. You're Always the pointy-eared human. The green... The... Hey, you're the pointy-eared human. There's the green human and the short human. <sighs> And then, yes, and then the I'm human human. human. <laughs> and the human human. All right. The picks, the pisky queen comes up. Oh, thank you so very much. You have destroyed her and now our glade will be safe and he'll stop eating our wildflowers. Here, let us help you before you, before you head to restore our light and go up to Tobin's toe. So, what they do for you as the DM turns on the music. There we go. All right. They offer you as a reward. Yep, they offer you um, little handfuls of nuts and berries and their little outstretched hands and they're please eat eat this eat this it tastes good it's very delicious it's very delicious and then i I, oh. I hold out my hands uh cupped for them to to place them inside no i smack them out of the no i i i say hey uh that's very kind of you but this is not actually what we're looking for out of this we're glad we can help you but we really need to be pushing forward on our way now but i like berries berries make me feel really good inside whoa yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not a rules person and i remember that rule about the, the rule not was taking to the take food. what they offer you yeah, I want to take what the pixies offer me. Why do you must you take this away from me? We have a job to do. Why are you such a ruin? I say as I'm body. sipping the the fish oil and trying to get a little high out of it. <laughs> All right, Vimeo, the the pisky that had been offering you the handful of like nuts and berries and like little clover leaves just looks mightily offended and buzzes away from you angrily mm. and the other ones kind of buzz away however the piskies in front of your companions are still offering them the handfuls of it's not much more than a mouthful but these little handfuls of food now eat 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 guys Lance we have rations Lance takes it all right it says you... thank you yeah guys, we'll... eat it. these shall make me feel so good inside <laughs> do you do you eat the offered repast? Yes, I do. Sure. Oh, you feel the magic restore you from the fey food. You all have the equivalent of a long rest. Woohoo! Well, I guess except for Mimi, but <laughs> except for Mimi, Mimio, yeah. The piskies also don't need it. Come the old for... woman told us to eat it. I, I thought she said don't. I, no, she said do take what they offer. It's probably so because I was so them. intoxicated that I, I just heard what I wanted to hear. Indeed. Get my spell slots back. One of them comes forward carrying a small, like, looks like whetstone. <laughs> May I sharpen your weapons? And buzzes in front of, we'll start with Sin. Absolutely. Ooh. I'm totally down for you sharpening my sword. The Pisky runs the um, the whetstone up and down your blade, and you realize that the blade now has a preternatural sharpness to it. I'm about to adjust it on your character sheet, but Ooh. your long sword is or your great sword is now the equivalent of a plus one. Who else wants their weapon sharpened? Lance well, my, my weapon is, is more of a blunt weapon, but maybe if you had some, some oil to polish it up. It doesn't matter. This will work. It works on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Free weapon upgrades. Come on. Who wants them? I'm holding a short sword. Can I hold that up and be like, here, sharpen this? I don't think they'll want to. <laughs> 
Yeah, you smack. Not only you smacked their offerings to the ground. Give us one moment. What do they have to say about it, though? Well, the piskies are buzzing around, sharpening everybody's weapon. The pisky also makes his way over to Lance. Am I sharpening your weapon too? Yes, uh, Lance offers up their long sword. All right. Uh, add all this. The poor Mimi. What? What? What does the pisky say? What does the pisky say? Dramatic what does pause. The pisky say. The Pisky says, you're shit out of luck. No, the Pisky comes buzzing <laughs> over to the Are you going to smack me or can I, can I sharpen your weapon? You may. Look, I didn't need the food. I'm at full health. So. I, I, I get it. I mean, I know they feel really great right now, but give them three hours. Boy, are they going to have to take a big old. And the Pixie Queen is like, hey, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to take a bathroom break before the lighthouse is what I predict. All right, all of your weapons have been changed to a plus one. All right, the piskies are absolutely thrilled and wish you much luck and safety um, as you climb the trail up to Tobin's toe to restore their light so that they might dance. Hmm. Well, they turned out to be more pleasant than I anticipated, honestly. Gotta give people a chance. <laughs> um, DM Lauren is just, she's she's really good for the, the like, I did not expect that. She's a <laughs> fabulous adventure writer. I am, I am very fortunate to call her friend. She has just made my own creations that much better with her input. All right. The trail eventually reaches the top of the bluff called Tobin's Toe. The lighthouse stands 60 feet tall. It is made of sturdy stone construction. 300 feet ahead is a small footbridge crossing a tiny creek. Past the creek are several wreckers milling about the meadow in front of the lighthouse. Three bodies lie broken at the foot of the lighthouse. And that deserves... Oh, I lost it. You deserve this. Three bodies. Oh, no. Are we ready? Traumatic we, we did just see a beach full of, like, bodies. Three is not that big of a deal anymore. <laughs> Rude. Maybe I was like, ah, I've seen worse. It's like black. Does my dark now. vision help right now? <laughs> it's black, but you can see me clearly in the <laughs> bottom corner. <laughs> I think my dark vision no. worked because I can now see. The screen's it's, not it's, black it, anymore. It's, uh, my, it's mine's still black. Yeah. Mine is, yeah. It's because there's dynamic lighting. So across the... Um, oh, because our characters aren't in yet. There we go. All right. Yes, you see the quad of wreckers. Two of them on the other side of the bridge see you and they let out startled shouts. Oh, no! I, I'm not it's seeing anything. You're not. I, I see my token in the bottom left corner, and that is it. <laughs> yeah, I have the same view. I don't even see the token. I see the map. I do see the map. <laughs> All right, hold on. But hold on. I can see it on the stream, so. Oh, yeah, I can see it on the stream. <laughs> I just can't see me or let anything me, else. Let me, let me check your vision. Stand by. At, technical at, at least it's not affecting the viewers. Yeah. Other I'm than worried about that black box. I'm afraid it might, you know, have a golden dragon under it. Well, <laughs> yeah, level three. Well, don't give the, the don't give the DM ideas. Never, never assume you're gonna fight something because then you'll give the DM an idea and they'll make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I see that nod. I see that nod. Um, Juniper, Juniper, yeah. you get a DM's inspiration for. Knowing the truth of things, you have seen into the matrix. <laughs> All right, oh, okay, everybody has go. vision. Everybody, can you see the map? Yes, I still can't. I can now. I, I, I know too can. much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ara, should I refresh now? roll 20? Maybe, uh, quite possibly. I am. Double checking one other setting. 
It's all right. You didn't build your character with dark vision. We didn't build our characters at all. Do this. Save set. Oh, there oh, we go. There it is. I see things. I, see things. I, I, I will call out. It is so wonderful to work with DM Charlie. DM Charlie is just yes, such a professional a and has helped make sure this game is smooth. <laughs> so thank you so much. Gorsh. Thank you. That's a very nice compliment. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, our, our To do a little tagline for our cadre, it's we consistently provide exceptional and memorable role-playing experiences. It's super important to us that our players walk away like going, dang, that was great, and want to play more. <laughs> so what was I doing here? That's right. I was about to start whomping on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With a cry, the wreckers scream, have at you, 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 you cursed adventurers come to... Restore the light and undo our perfidious work. All right. Uh, sort and... Again, with the low initiative rolls. Wow. <laughs> no. Silly dwarf. Rude. <laughs> All right. Gotta love that nat 20 on initiative, though. <laughs> that is super nice. DM opens up the opposition character sheet. DM moves this. DM continues to narrate his life in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. How about this? Arr! How about some of these? How about this? And a little bit of that. And some of this. And some of those. And a bit of this. And one or two of these for some good fighty, fighty noise. Lance! You see the wreckers guarding the approaches across the narrow bridge, the fast running stream, blocking easy access to the wreckers as they stand by, ready to receive your attack. What do you want to do, fighter? What do you want to do? I'm going to make my way towards the bridge. You know, this armor, it's real heavy and uh, slows me down a bit. So I'm going to get as close as I can without blocking it from my uh, faster companions. Alrighty. Is that everything? Uh, can I move again and use up my other action as a move? Yes, it yes. Off? It's 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 called a dash action that allows you to basically move double. All right, cool. I'm gonna step up Run to this the first bridge. guy. Yeah. All right. Standing below the bluff, the wrecker is like. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa as he holds his light crossbow, like kind of backing away from you, as you charge at him. What is the look on Lance's face as they come charging forward with murderous intent? Just solid, doesn't even flinch, and just very much a bring it attitude. Nice, very nice. All right, go ahead and, oh, that was your full dash. You don't have an attack. Ooh, puts you in a bad position. All mm. right. The wrecker here spins with that light crossbow. Seeing you charge his friend, the crossbow lets fly. There is a twang as the metallic bolt comes sizzling through the air right past your head. You suddenly pause, realizing that you have just charged into a deleterious situation. North by the tower, one of the other assailants cocks his light crossbow and comes running up the bluff. bluff. He aims with that light crossbow, looking serious and intent. Let's see. The light crossbow shot goes sailing out. There is a twang as the metallic dart sails towards the ranger. It lands in the dirt, dirt burying with a loud turf right between your legs as it thrums from the energy of the shot. Wow, your guys' initiative, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. I don't want to be rude, but I think the term I'm thinking of is blows chunks. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's see. All right. Another record comes running, jumps. Uh, let's see. Runs past his buddy, jumps down, flanking you, Lance, pulls a cutlass, and swings at the fighter's head. 
very narrowly. Lance turns with that greatsword. There's a loud clang of metal on metal, and sparks fly as the blades sizzle down each other. However, he does not get through your defenses. You do not take any damage. Mimeo, it is your turn, Ranger. What do you do? All right, well, I'm rushing in because I need to help. And I'm here on the river's edge, and I'm going to target the opponent uh, that ran in, that rushed in to assist his feller, buddy. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. That'd be the one. Okay. And I am going to shoot him. Ooh. Oh, wow. Uh, no need to roll damage on that one. But what you do need to roll me is a dexterity check. Uh, Just hit your dexterity and roll it. Dexterity. Yeah, you want to roll higher than a 10 on this. Mm. Where do I do that at? I'm sorry. On your character sheet? Just where your dexterity is? Oh, oh. Gotcha. All right. Perfect. You get a stinging slap as you release the bowstring as it hits your forearm and you wince. However, you realize that such was your miscalculation. You're lucky you didn't snap your bowstring. Sin. <laughs> okay. I was a nat one, Mimi, so bad things happen with nat ones. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so I have speed 30. It should land me right about on the bridge, correct? I can't go any further than the bridge. Five, 10, yep, that is absolutely correct. You shall not pass, I guess is the best <laughs> way I can say it. All right. All right. The final record, the one who was charged by Lance, has no um, other reaction than lifts that light crossbow, hurriedly firing at disadvantage into the oncoming fighter. The weapon... Twang! The missile shoots up into the sky and disappears somewhere in the battle space, completely spent and useless. Dwarf, it is your turn. Uh, well, I'm going to move as far as I can, which is right here. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then uh, can the kitty come back out to play? <laughs> yeah. All right. Give us one moment while we summon the spiritual weapon kitty. <laughs> I'm going to put it there. I'm going to give it its name. Oh, it's a different kitty this time. <laughs> it's a much cuter kitty. Oh. And then I need permissions to move it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Juniper. All right. So I mean, it's look gonna... at that. Isn't it so disgustingly cute? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to show this for all of you to see. Oh, <laughs> vicious killer! Uh, I'm so glad none of you have asked why I have those tokens. <laughs> why I just, would I need to I ask? Just, there, there is. Why don't you? Why, why, <laughs> yeah, why, why not have pictures of good kitties? I mean, it's totally not because you're going to make us fight a bunch of kitties later. No, not at all. Because <laughs> that, right. that would just be me. That would just be me. <laughs> all right. No, it's, it's, um, so the kitty's going to come and, uh, claw at the, uh, the one fighting Lance currently. All right. So let me. All right. The little tiny cute American Great Tabby okay, um, lashes out with its little tiny claws. No damage. All right, so it's this plus two. Nine plus. damage. <laughs> Suddenly, the, the sweet little glowing ball of 
gray bluff. <laughs> Turns immediately feral. The iris can't back. It is 60, 60 degree <laughs> can. The eyes just turn angry and turn a bright orange. And then it hisses. Yow! Disappears up his pant leg as he stands there <laughs> dancing, howling, pounding at his own leg. And you see this small shape spiraling up the leg and suddenly the kitty comes shooting out of his mouth, oh, up his chest, over his face, down his scalp and down his back, landing on the other side where immediately it goes <coughs> and starts cleaning itself as blood begins gushing out of a myriad, dozen scores of wounds that cover his body. The poor man is staggered and just stands there ready to drop from the kitty attack. <laughs> I can't believe you made me do that. Anything else, Norm? <laughs> hey, it's your fault for having a kitty token. I would have made it just a normal weapon. <laughs> no problem. No problem. It's um, um, does my spear have the throne property or no? Uh, yeah, they do. They do. <gasps> okay. Uh, I'm going to use my regular action to throw my spear at that one right there. Are you old enough to get if I ask you if you have a magic helmet? <laughs> no. Spear a magic helmet! Magic helmet! Magic helmet! Oh, come on, Bugs Bunny, Elmer mm -hmm. Fun. they do the ring. <laughs> magic helmet! I'm 22, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I got it, Charlie. I got Thank it. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want. I want to see your nerd card. I want to see your. No, go right ahead. There, Throw this there's my out. nerd card right there. Every single Legend of Zelda amiibo. That that is my nerd card. All right, there you go. There you go. Roll the spear. <laughs> uh, so throne is um, same it as the one-handed roll. Uh, let me double check. Because it's not on here, here so. Yeah, just go ahead and use it as the one-handed. Okay. All right, the spear goes sailing out, and you are aiming at the uh, the kitty ruined uh, wrecker, correct? Uh, this one here, yes. All right, perfect. Oh, which one? I thought this is the one that you. That hit. that's the one that the kitty hit. All right, this, this one is there. the one go that I throw at. Go yeah. ahead and roll damage. All right. The spear comes sailing out just ripping a deep gouge into the wrecker's shoulder as he lets out a grunt of surprise and pain. All right, Lance. Lance is so utterly confused about what just happened. A cat just <laughs> decimated the person in front of them. And so they're like, well, I guess I'll just try and finish him off. All right, with a clinical expertise, you insert sword, kill enemy, roll damage. 13. All right. <laughs> the man, as he drops to his knees in front of you, actually mutters, thank you, cat scratch, they really hurt, you know, oh. <laughs> and he falls over into the turf with a groan. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I'm actually going to use uh, the maneuver sweeping attack. Perfect. Uh, and use one of my superiority die to Perfect. attack the, ooh, that was the wrong way, <laughs> giving myself die, not taking away, um, to attack the one that was next to him. Um, I added to the damage If the original attack roll would hit the second creature, it takes damage equal to the number you roll on your superiority die. Yep. So I don't have to roll. Roll a die eight. Okay. Roll a die eight. Four. Your blade carries over the tip, tearing into the arm and upper chest of the brigand. He lets out a squeal of pain as bright blood splashes across the grass and into the river water. All right. This wrecker jumps in. His scimitar or his cutlass held on high. I'll put pain to you! However, you are able to respond with your sword, blocking the clumsy attack. All right, this wrecker to the north comes running forward. He lifts his light crossbow. He takes aim, and the dart comes flying out towards the half-orc. 
Oh my gosh, there's a loud twang as his crossbow string snaps and he drops the useless weapon. Uh, this wrecker is still there. He also has his cutlass. He swings in desperation at Lance and Asher. Once again, you turn with the trained ease of a professional fighter and stop the clumsy half-handed blow and take no damage. You're back round to the ranger. What is you, Mimi? Perfect. Well, I uh, am just going to lob off another shot with my arrow and right. target target that same enemy that I was trying to hit before. Alrighty. Yeah. Let's give that a whirl. Nice! Your arrow hits its mark. Uh, okay. The missile drilling deep into his chest just below the clavicle. It's sitting there quivering in time with his heartbeat, his eyes wide, and you can tell that he is not much longer for the mortal coil. Sit. 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 Okay, I'm up. So I'm gonna go ahead and let out a roar and then... I'm gonna charge the one who dropped the crossbow dropped. There we go. All right. There we go. Screaming. There we go. It's kind of ending right there with a little. There we go. Okay. And I take my sword. I go, ha ha. And I bring right. it up. And I swing. And it. Holy crud. Go ahead and roll damage. The blade bites deep into him, but your roar of a charging orc uh, brandishing a weapon is enough to oh, quake the sec. soul of... Oh, yeah? I apologize. Um, it looks like the damage got changed. It's missing the dice. I was just noticing that. It's just got a one plus four. Four? It really does. Oh, no memento. They upgraded oh, their weapon and they stole your die. <laughs> we know we get what we're doing. Uh, strength plus. Where did the damage go? Oh, oops. Uh, great sword is one die eight, one die ten. Pulling it up to double check because I'm totally not remembering. I am double checking. Not a great sword, a great <laughs> sword. Oh gosh, you I have a great Schwartz. The Schwartz is far, is good with you. Two dice six. Oof. Uchi Mahamari Palenci. That is um wow, not to be trifled with. All right, and there's that, and great sword, great sword, great sword. All right, let's go ahead and roll your damage again. How about, holy crud, holy crud. What does it look like as you kill the man once again in one blow? Well, I, I came up and I started panting because I was like, oh, I made it just in time, ha ha. And I go, ha ha, and I swing it like a baseball bat and whoosh. And it cleans right through it. And then go, ah, we got it! Yay! <laughs> the, the only word that I can use as the body crashes into the turf is soggy. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's see, that is a dead wrecker. Dwarf, we are around to you. All right, so uh, Kitty, Kitty's gonna look to, uh, r right at her next victim. Uh, and, you know, just, you know, do kitty things. Aww. Um, the little gray ball of fluff seems more interested in rolling around and playing with its tail and does not attack. That's okay. Uh, 
I'm going to... I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to fight this one. All right. Uh, I'm just going to do a one-handed attack with my Warhammer. <laughs> yes, you are. Roll damage <clears throat> as the flat, broad head. Holy crud. <laughs> Please describe the coup de grace as you drop yet another one of these criminals. So, quick question: How tall is he? Just because I I I, I want to visualize this in my head while I'm doing this. Like, is he taller than me or? I put eight. Okay, so he's a bit taller than me. So, um, my warhammer kind of sails through the air and kind of hits him on the side of his head. Uh. And just kind of makes him fall to the side and just crumple. Like a sack of potatoes, down goes the wrecker. All right, wow. Lance, we there's one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, weakened from my previous arrow, no doubt. Indeed. Oh, yeah, very much weakened from the previous arrow. You have I all had a part by my play. So there we go. <laughs> Lance, go right ahead, please. Lance, seeing uh, Ara take down that enemy instead, swings to the last one standing. And two handed sword just slashes at him. Roll damage, please. That is a definite hit as your blade lashes out. Nine. Lance, please describe the coup de gras as you finish the combat. Comes down, double handing, just cleaves into him. And down goes the wrecker, never to rise again. Congratulations. Kitty kind of just like a bye-bye <laughs> and then disappears. I, I will come back whenever you are, are needing me, Ara. <laughs> Alrighty. The tower lighthouse of tobin's toe Sit i'm i'm ready to go up here am uh am i allowed to retrieve my spear or has it broken oh no you can retrieve your spear cool and i and totally magic spaced that i could actually throw a javelin <laughs> actually i think i could probably throw a great sword too right well it has to have the throne of property within oh, yeah. mechanics at least but <laughs> I have a hand axe. I feel really you could, you could, you could throw your greatsword, but it wouldn't do greatsword damage. It would do. <laughs> I, I feel really dumb that I have a, a javelin and I haven't used it. Oh, that's all right. You don't have to use everything you have. It's all right, but the Schwartz is definitely with me. So my great Schwartz. <laughs> that's what matters. Uh huh. So I'm all about checking out these bodies over here. Are they dead? Are they injured? What's going on with them? Yeah, checking them out. I'm sure to help them. <laughs> they are. I'm, I'm actually like you know concerned for whether or not they are still alive or not. It's a status check. We'll see what the outcome is. The bodies are indeed that. They are all corpses. Mm. Considering their, their rudimentary dress, um, you feel that they were probably the original lighthouse keepers that the um, crew of wreckers uh, brutally murdered in their effort to put out the light in order to work their crimes. So any resources we could possibly acquire from these people? Or are we just uh, going to skirt on by and enter the lighthouse? Considering that they were murdered by professional robbers, they too have been picked clean. So they of course. Fanny pack. I like how you keep trying to loot the innocent people instead of the people that looted them. Like, there are four dead bodies of the people that robbed them, and you're like, hey, uh, these innocent people, I'm going to try and rob them a second time after they're dead. It's resource management. <laughs> Go manage the resources of the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, do, do, do the Skyrim thing and just, just take all their clothes off of them. After I, their I'm managing <laughs> my own resources. Okay. <laughs> but hearing that, I'm totally ready to step inside the lighthouse. <clears throat> all about exploring that lighthouse. Oh boy, if we just disappeared. I'm nervous. Ah! 
There we go. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right. I guess we find out where that where that what that black square was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you approach the lighthouse, and as you open the door on the first floor, you see several more of the brigands looting and pillaging the kitchen and dining area. That's um, my kitchen to loot! <laughs> right? They turn and face you. And guess what that means? <laughs> That's right. Time. It's incredibly Encounter. unoriginal. I don't care. And another horrible initiative roll for me. What the heck? <laughs> another <laughs> 20 for me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm, I, I'm, I'm the support, so I go last anyways. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As we are back in combat, and Lance, as you throw the door open, you hear the... Uh, the bandits inside the building looting and helping themselves to whatever remains inside the kitchen of the lighthouse. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to charge at this first one and try and take them by surprise. All right. All right. They're not surprised. They heard the sounds of combat, but <laughs> you definitely rush in and, and... They were still looting. I mean, obviously they weren't that concerned about it. <laughs> anyway, I stab him. Oh, not very well. Uh, ready for uh, you. Uh, uh, you got something else? I was like, mm, mm. no, I'm going to not use that. I'll save that for what is probably going to be the big boss. All right. <laughs> he drops the handful of foodstuffs that he had, draws his blade from his belt, and swings at you. But due to the close confines, of the room, he's not able to get a good swing at you and fully misses. The record to the rear comes running around the stairs. Lock the door, don't let him in! Doesn't quite make it, has his cutlass out, and he's like, what the hell? Takes a swing at you again, Lance. However, trained soldier that you are, he does not hit you. The final record comes moving up, ready to block the door standing there with his cutlass um, partially obscured by the doorway. Sid, what would you like to do? Sid? Are you still with us? Are yes, you on mute? Are you on mute? Sorry, I was handling a different issue real quick. I apologize. Oh, no problem. Um, You're fine. Bouncing between different roles right now. Yay! So it's my turn! I can have some fun. Let's see. So we go. You better run in for backup, because Lance is, like, taking on three dudes at once. Oh, yeah, we got it. I mean, so, if they want that. But... <laughs> <laughs> three dudes at once? <laughs> He <laughs> just got there. I got it. Okay, there we go. Let's do this. I'm in. All I've had in. more. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Sorry, they're, they're armed with weapons. <laughs> so I, I I jump in there, and again, I go, Ha-ha! My great sword! It is here for action! We are here! We shall do this! Dun, dun, dun. How about you, buddy? And I hit the one right in square in front of me. All right. And um, let's see. We swing that great sword. And it just like hits the wall, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. The blade cleaves into the top of the door jam, failing to do anything as you stand there. Whoops. Can you still hear me? Or did I lose yes, my I mic? Yeah, oh, we're good. I can hear you. Sometimes it. It does things when I hit it like that. Yeah, cleaving stuck in the door jam over your head, and the wrecker looks at you with a wicked grin on his face. Mimeo, standing there in the back, what would you like to do? Well, I I want to get into this room too, because there's that's where all the action's happening. But now Sin is in my way. You can and... move through Sin. However, getting past the two wreckers, that's going to require either an acrobatics roll or a strength roll 
as you shove your way through them. They're they're gonna actively try to keep you from getting into the room. Oh well, I don't like that. I I have a short sword, so I'm I'm thinking about moving into close range now because I can't I can't hit them with a bow at this okay. kind of angle. You won't be able to occupy the doorway with sin because two characters can't stop in the same um, space. So you can either shoot or you can try to get all the way in and force your way into the room um, through sin for free, but then you'd have to make a roll to get past the wreckers standing there guarding the doorway. Uh, force my way if you go here, you'll be able to see this one and be able to shoot it. You're sure about that? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah if... your, your allies, you know, don't really count as obstacles for you it was if it was, it was another oh enemy. awesome well yeah. then in that case let's let her fly with the longbow again don't roll one we don't take don't. friendly fire <laughs> <laughs> oh no the arrow comes sizzling right past the orc's ear chunking right into the cheek of the record causing a big old gouge part of his jowl flops down and blood begins to paint his face and neck. He lets out a howl, his eyes wide as he takes a staggering half step back from the half fort. All right, fourth. All right, so I'm just gonna go over here uh, next to uh, Mimeo and then I'm gonna cast Bless uh, on on Lance, Sin, and myself. Because uh, I can only pick three creatures uh, with a level one version. So all three of us get a extra D4 ev- um, whenever you make an attack roll or a saving throw for the next minute, so long as I maintain concentration. So when you roll a, a an attack, you add a d4 to that number, basically. Perfect. Thank you, Juniper. All right. And then Lance. I'm going oh, to yep. omit my bonus Sorry. action. Okay, perfect. Plants! All right, uh, I'm going to attack the one that's in front of me. We're going to two-handed and try and... So I'm blocking the door, the one north. Okay, perfect. The north. Uh, we're gonna two-hand it and just really try and take a chunk out of him plus a d4. So chunk yeah. taken. Roll damage. Fifteen. Glance. Describe how you slay the brigand in one deletrious strike. My blade sinks into his neck, separating his head from his body and he collapses to the ground. With a loud, squishy thud. <laughs> Nicely done. Anything else, fighter? Um, I... No, I'm not going to use any of my bonus actions right now. Blood begins to pool around your boots, staining them. All right, that record is dead. <laughs> the record here in the doorway <laughs> tries to protect and keep... The party out of Tobin's Toe Lighthouse. The Cutlass once again sings out, himself catching the edge of the weapon in the door jam, failing to connect with the half orc. The other one standing there behind the cover of the doorway darts the weapon out, stabby, stabby. The weapon finds a convenient space, stabbing into the half orc side, deep, deep, deep into their flank. Seven oh. points of piercing damage. Sin, it is your turn. Oh, ow. 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 (laughs) So I let out a wail, and I'm like, and that's when I decide to just push my way right through. All right. That is an athletics opposed roll. He is assisted by his companion in the door, so he is rolling with advantage. Go ahead and make your athletics roll. Okay, and let me... Oh my this. god. Oh! <laughs> Beat you by one! Beat you. Like, everybody's bloodied and just like, ah! As you surge forward, they're just like, ah, no, no! And you hear one of them, oh, she's so strong! 
<laughs> but you do not get your way through. That is your action. A bonus action or anything like that. Damn it, I'm still stuck in the door. <laughs> Mimeo, Ranger, can you solve this problem? If uh, this can be solved like every other problem with a firing of my bow. Or fireball, yes. Fireball? Is that a thing I can do? Not yet. Oh. I don't oh, sweet rain- summer chest. <laughs> no, rangers can't, but... Yeah. Sweet summer child, keep playing. We'll we'll teach you the joys of the fireball. I since I since Sin moved to block the way, as she does, uh, I feel like I just gotta keep providing that support the best way I can by by launching attacks from behind. So um, right, aiming no for the person right in front of uh, Sin. Perfect. And here we go with that. Whoa! Whoa! You hmm. knock an arrow, drawing the string back to the tip of your pointy, yeah. elegant ear, and let fly. The arrow comes sailing out. Describe how it kills your foeman. Uh, straight to the forehead. And it's just, it's just a clean. Oh, I'm dead. There's the sound of a nail over. driving into a coconut. He <laughs> topples over, clearing the space into the lighthouse. Well, well done. Dwarf! Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna cure wounds on Sin. <laughs> so. Sin needs it. Yeah. She needs a loving hand. A loving so hand. you heal four, exactly seven points. <laughs> Aha! That is an excellent heal. Alrighty. Glance. Gonna make sure the doorway is still a little clear. I'm gonna step over here and I'm gonna try and uh, take this guy down as much as possible. And then I think, what, you still have an extra D4 if I need it? You do. Your left. weapon lashes out, tearing through the leather armor, opening a wide wound. Roll damage. Ten. Ooh, nearly flensing his back to the bone. You see the nauseating image of white spinal column underneath the bone, blood, and sinew of his back as he lets out a scream in pain and drops to his knees one hand crashing into the ground as he lets his weapon go nearly killed in one shot you realize he is out of this battle well done what do you do party what do well you i do? first try and get my sword out of the door <laughs> <laughs> Easy enough. You just wrench it free. Yeah, we're going to need to all step inside the lighthouse and uh, examine our surroundings. I found this really nice chair right here, though. So, <laughs> Oh, no, it's this one right here. That one's much better. All right. The base of the lighthouse, the kitchen area, is um, uh, functional at best. Not really built for a lot of comfort. You can tell that it has been uh, looted and uh, ravaged, the cabinet open, some of the belongings spilled out onto the floor, several of the cushions cut open, and uh, it seems as though like most useful things, the books have been opened and dumped onto the floor. Uh, there's spillage from what the... Uh, the wreckers had been looting like from their arms when they grabbed their weapons to okay. fight you. Okay, if there's nothing of interest on this level, can we proceed up the lighthouse? I say you absolutely give, me. I said give me a second. I reach into my fanny pack and I pull out one of those berries that I had snuck in there and eat it. <laughs> You're one of those half orcs that wears like a polo and like some nerd glasses. Or, yeah, or and I, I, I glasses. checked. It's in. It's my in my equipment. I've got a belt pouch. 
And that is my fanny pack. That works. And a little cockatrice on, on the breast of your eyes on. All right. Um, all right. So you eat the, is it a good berry or is it a, uh, uh, one of the berries from the, uh, Piskies? It was one of the berries from the Piskies that I kind of. Okay. Yeah. It, it does not have an additional effect. Right. You having, I didn't think so, but they tasted the good. Uh huh. Uh huh. Tastes like organic. Do you head upstairs in pursuit of Ferg? Yes. Yes. Let's yes. Do it. But uh, first, I'm going to put the guy out of his misery because you don't leave enemies at your back. Oh, I forgot there was one still alive. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, he's dead now. I killed. <laughs> Just fair enough. So clean. dark. Oh. Wow! You don't leave an enemy at your back. A lot of, a lot of un, uh, unchecked aggression here from Lance. <laughs> Lance, you know when we get back to the main city, I know this therapist <laughs> that would just be do wonders for you. <laughs> Lance is like, uh, yeah, I already have two. We're working on it. Okay. <laughs> the the magic of therapy. <laughs> yeah, the rappy. Well, I think it's time to go up. Yes. <laughs> all right, and I gotta remove that token, and I will move you all on in. There we go. Perfect. You make it up to the climb the stairs to the second level. Uh, it looks like the sleeping area, the floor has been thoroughly ransacked. Some of the furniture is upended and personal belongings are scattered across the floor. You see that there, uh, the stairs stop here. Windows in all the walls look out over the surrounding ter terrain. You can see the sea in the distance. A ladder leads to a hatchway in the ceiling. Hmm. I will yep. go first. I think trap. We got it. We got to explore it, though. I'm sure this will be fine. Investigate. <laughs> All right, you're investigating the um, the trap door. Please make an investigation roll. I have a zero. All right, you got that right. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a it's a door. The trap Let's door is made of wood, and it opens <laughs> up. Aha! Uh -huh. That is about all the useful information you are able to glean, as you are probably a bit distracted by all the bloodshed of the previous portion of the day. No. Nah. So we can ascend, though, right? If you, yeah, if you absolutely want to. I'm seeing not that stop. it's seeing I'm that it's not a trap. <laughs> Does anyone else want to examine this before we go up? <laughs> Maybe somebody that has a higher intelligence. Can can I examine it once? Once I over? said a higher. Yeah, intelligence. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, check this out. <laughs> I'm going to laugh if you get lower than an oh. <laughs> This door is well. made of wood. I'm not <laughs> sure which way it opens. I'm not sure which way it opens. Somebody go through the door. <laughs> well, Sin just reaches up and goes, well, if there's anyone who's going to go through it, I can. Let's do this. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. You have, like, you're so squishy. You don't want to do it. We appreciate our, <laughs> our headstrong half work. <laughs> with, with, with her fanny pack, don't forget that. Oh, where she keeps her berries. I've got my bow right behind you, like, ready for action. So. <laughs> we go All right. Up. It's 10 feet up the ladder, so you will lose 10 feet of movement. Um, from the base of the ladder to climb up to the next level. But then once inside the third floor, you would have 
20 feet of movement. You're not mm-hmm. sure if you've been detected from if anyone is up there. You also aren't sure if anyone is up there because you haven't heard anything. Not that you've tried to determine that. <laughs> this very specific information's got me now, like, now shaking here. Well, let's do it. There's something up there. There's something up there. Hi ho! Here we go. Here I go to save the day. I think we expected some kind of threat at the it's very least. It's a polymorphed least. tiny dragon. You All die right. upon a tree. Comes the golden dragon. <laughs> All right. Before you head up the stairs, what assumption are you making about what's above you, Sin? Well, I'm assuming that there is an, an immense amount of people there. And okay. are we in are we in uh, combat? Are we just good? You are, are not in combat just... at the moment. Okay. Yes. So I would I, I am assuming that there's someone up there. And I'm right. assuming that they're not not here to do do us well. And they're <laughs> up there and it's going to be negative. But it's more wreckers. Yeah, it's got to be more records. And I, if there's anyone that's going to bust in there and make sure this gets done, I <laughs> will finish it all up. Okay. okay. Thank goodness we have somebody volunteering to put... Sin is right. charging up the ladder. Lance, what are you doing after Sin charges up the ladder? Following after her. All right. Mimeo, hmm. what are you doing after the two fighter types disappear up the ladder? <laughs> Uh, let's see. I am, I'm going up too. Okay. Definitely. I'm just, I'm looking to, I'm looking to Ara like you, me. And Ara, what are you doing? Juniper, what is Ara doing after they all disappear up the ladder? I think she ended up muted. Juniper. Oh, the mic's not working. Roll. <clears throat> if you want to type in chat, and then we can see what happens when you all disappear up the ladder. And when you can refresh, just to see if it's an issue with the um, video. Hmm. As we all just kind of like hang pause. If if if. She wants to go first, and I can bring up the rear. That's totally doable. All right. Are we getting uh, her back? Is she active yet? Just typing. I think, yeah, okay, I, see, I see some type of typing going on. <laughs> and which chat log? Oh, there we go. Shield of Faith first. Perfect. Oh, red. Shield of Faith. <laughs> All right, the magics fluoresce and surround you in those glowing, radiant plates that quickly turn invisible, and you feel protected by the divine magics of the dwarven god. All right, you go rushing up the ladder. Leroy Jenkins! Exactly. If this were a campaign, this would be, you rush up the ladder and you discover next week... But we won't do that. You rush up the ladder (laughs) and you are not surprised that you see a dark bearded man and a pair of crewmen standing there. Two of them look to the dark bearded man and shout out, Captain Ferg, what do we do? And the evil, vile looking man shouts back, Why, of course, we kill some. Mm. Get ready. I thought he might say that. You're not <laughs> you're 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 not surprised is like really really a not surprise. Okay. Um let's see, let's make some fighty fighty. Can I've got 20, 20 Yeah, uh, now we can. Oh good. Okay. I I'm I've been trying to troubleshoot my mic because now I can suddenly hear myself in my own ears and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Hello, hmm. I can hear you. Hi Juniper. Hi. <laughs> No. All right, initiative is up. Here we go. 
Sin, you come clamoring up the ladder, crashing through the trap door. Uh, Lance, quickly on your heels, followed immediately by the ranger. And lastly, the dwarf comes piling out. As the three individuals at the top of the lighthouse, the large plinth darkened a stone that seems to glow magically, set on the floor nearby and covered with a heavy cloth. They let out a cry of rage, weapons drawn as they charge into battle with you. However, prepare not assuming that it was empty. Sin, you have the initiative. What do you want to do? Well, I let out for the halls of Sesamir. And I charge and I turn into a rage. <laughs> rage. All right. And I I am going to defend my group. So I move right up to uh, right into position. Um, right underneath. And I go, ha ha, here is my great sword. I shall defeat you. Here we go. And I fumble with my bone dice a little bit just for a little bit of extra luck. And I let loose. Holy crud, the blade oh. cleaved into the studded leather armor of Captain Berg. He lets out a grunt, his teeth gritted as spittle flies. Roll damage. Wow, a deep, deep gouge into the man's arm and chest. Copious amounts of blood come splashing out. He seems staggered under the level, the, the theory of that attack. His eyes suddenly grow wide, and you realize that he is reevaluating you with a newfound respect. All right, anything else? I am else? here, I am queer, and I have my fanny pack. <laughs> That's what we ask of you. All right. The wrecker screams out, Captain! He comes running forward with the cutlass. He makes a mighty swing towards you. The blade lashes out, tearing into you. You feel blood trickle down the back of your shoulder as his cutlass cuts into you for seven points of slashing damage. Dwarf, it is your turn. I think you already know what I'm going to say. He'll sin. <laughs> kitten! Kitten! Kitty come oh. out to play? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me get kitten ready. Yay for kitty. <laughs> <laughs> That's going on a t-shirt. <laughs> the fact that they're all like little sleepy too. It's just... There you go. There's your spiritual kitten. Spiritual kitten. <laughs> All right. Spiritual kitten. I got it. Spiritual. Spiritual kitten. Spiritual. All right. All right. The spiritual kitty is attacking Ferg or the Wrecker. The the the, the big bad evil guy. Berg, all right. The little orange cabbie opens its eyes, and once again, they turn that feral, demonic orange. The ears can't back 65 degrees. Claws come popping out fully an inch long. It gets that crazy, zoomy look and starts to climb up the captain's body. His eyes go wide. Not again! Damage. <laughs> Not again. That is uh, pandemic. <laughs> he lets out a scream, howling, howling, high pitches, his octaves, uh, some of the glass around the lighthouse shatters. So strident is his tone from the spiritual kitty attack. What do you, all right, what do you do, Ara? As you've used, that was a bonus action, right? Yes, that was a bonus action. Yeah. But since I've already uh, cast a spell this turn, I can't heal Sin yet. But I will see. So All I'm right. just gonna, just gonna smack from the other side with my warhammer. All right. 
the Warhammer sings out. There is a heavy chuff as the broad head of your weapon crashes into Purge's banded armor, or studded leather armor. Roll damage. Holy crud. There is a sickening sound of a meat tenderizer, and you feel something gelatinized under the force of your impact. The man lets out another high-pitched squeal of pain as he starts to, like, favor the hip that just is hanging weird underneath his armor. His eyes are streaming tears under the theory of the quick attack three of you have delivered. All right. He turns, however. He pulls out his cutlass. Ooh. And he glares at the half-orc. The cutlass lashes out once, twice. He lifts a dagger in his offhand and plunges it forward at the half-orc. The cutlass sings out, tearing into Sin. Once. She twists out of the way of the other cutlass blow, but the dagger catches her, delivering a total of 13 points of damage. You watch, horrified, as your half-orc companion drops to the floor, unconscious, bleeding, and now on death saves. Zero hit points. All right, Mimeo. <laughs> Relentless Endurance, just a quick question. Relentless Endurance is only if oh, it hits hey. me to zero hit points, right? Uh, let me double check. Relentless Endurance. It would help if I could spell Endurance today. Is it on your character sheet? Yeah. It's you want me a, to a the half work racial feature. Okay. Uh, and as far as I know, it brings you back to one hit point. I just put it into the chat. You are at one hit point. Woo! The half work drops to one hit point, and Ferg's eyes grow wide as he's like, How can this be? You should be dead! I done killed you! From behind, you hear a mew, and he flinches. <laughs> Mimeo! Uh, okay. <clears throat> Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna take care of this other sneaky guy who's hanging out on the side, but uh considering Sin is in such bad condition, um I have a spell. Yeah, it's a spell. Um called Goodberry. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Goodberry's that great. Allows me to basically pull out some magical healing berries. Is that something that I can give to? Oh yeah, Sam? absolutely, absolutely. All right, Please. well, let's uh, let's have the ranger run in to play some support. And if I'm right here, can I just use that spell? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, did I do it? Yeah, touch. Yeah, so uh, Sin will have to use an action to eat the berries and gain those hit points, but you pass them over. So Sin has a handful of these 10 berries that she can spend an action to eat them. They're like one hit point, one hit point, one hit point. But that is an excellent use of your action. Anything else? Uh, I don't, I can't pull off an attack after such an action like that, can I? No. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> All right, well, I've hopefully saved Sin. Hopefully. All right, the other record charges forward at Lance. That cutlass raised high. The weapon comes slashing out. The trained soldier just lifts the sword nonchalantly. There's a clang of metal on metal, and the attack by the pirate does not get through. Lance, a lot. Do what you do, please. Uh, I'm going to use one of my uh, superiority dice with the precision attack to get me an extra bonus. All right. Uh, plus a d4. Or no, it's... D8 for a D8. superiority dice, yeah. Sorry, You're going to need it. The blessing, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll very nice. Roll damage as your two handed longsword cleaves into the leather armor of the brigand. 
15. Oh, one chop, one drop. What does it look like as you put this guy down onto the wood decking of the top floor of the lighthouse? Lance sees that his uh, the companions are uh, faltering and just they just go in, kill, in and out. And I'm actually going to use my uh, action surge. All right. Don't forget you can also move. Yeah, so um, I'm going to move. Step up behind this guy and uh, use the extra attack. Uh, okay, once again, your blade sings out, chopping into the other wrecker. Roll damage. Ten. Wow. Much like down below, you see his back open up as you cross it. A deep wound exposing rib and tendon. He lets out an ear-splitting screech and drops his weapon and drops to his knees, bent over, trying desperately to stay alive. All right. That was very nice. Sin, we are back around to you. Okay. And I'm still in a rage. Complete rage. I, I don't blame you. A near death rage. I think I'm in a near death rage. I, 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 I <laughs> this is where I'm struggling because even though you handed me those berries, I, I can't even imagine me being like like ready to continue. I think like I'm still like in a rush. You could if you, if you don't attack too, you lose your rage. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you don't attack or get attacked. So. Right. right. So I think I'm in. I'm still running in a in in a in an attack thing. So I'm like, ha ha! You thought you got me? Ha ha! I have my fanny pack and I have berries for later. Ha ha! Yeah. I have this, and you are going down. And I raise my great great sword, cleaving the top of the thing if this if it's, if it's a close enough roof. And I go, wait. It's a quick. high domed roof. So yeah, high you've got plenty of space. Room. Yeah. So I, I quickly, you know, touch my bone dice a little bit just to get a little, hopefully a little extra luck. And I roll my green sword. Ah. The great sword comes down, cutting a deep gouge from the wood of the decking of the top floor of the lighthouse. Berg steps aside. Blithely, just like, ha-ha! You're a bit too slow, orc! You failed to hit. You have a bonus action. There you go. <laughs> Ara. Okay, so I'm going to use my last spell slot to heal up Sin. All right. You heal up eight points. And then Katie's gonna do its thing. Yeah. Oh, once Kitty again, the... is going to make use of the DM inspiration I got earlier to reroll that. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Juniper <laughs> listens. Nice. Oh goodness! Spiritual Kitty goes scrambling up the outside of the studded leather armor, but gets distracted by a tassel on back of one of the one of the bindings and pauses to play with it and does not get inside of Ferg's armor and does not cause any damage. Oh. All right. Ferg looks around at how he is now surrounded. The cutlet slashes out at Ara, at Mimeo, and the dagger lashes out at the half orc. Cutlass number one. Uh, Juniper, yep. Cutlass comes sailing down, ripping into your armor, doing nine points of slashing damage as blood begins to flow from your clavicle and shoulder. Mimeo, the cutlass lashes through the air. You dance back lightly on your balls of your feet, avoid being cut deep by the vicious attack. The dagger comes in an overhand chop, driving once again into Sin's shoulders for five points of piercing damage. The half-orc drops to her knees and falls face 
forward. But no, you should, you should be at four health, because I oh. healed you for eight. Oh, he? oh, oh eight, you did, and I didn't get it on there. I'm sorry. You didn't, you didn't. All right, retconning. The dagger plunges into your shoulder and pulls back a large welter of blood as you stand fighting with every last reserve of energy you have. Mimeo. Yeah, uh... I'm at four health right now. Yeah. Sin's health is fine for now. You've got berries for later. <laughs> I'm more concerned about uh, the big bad, the remaining boss. Now, is it advantageous for me at all to cast the uh, Hunter's Mark again just for that bonus? It does extra damage, yeah. Uh, do I have a way of knowing how much health he has left? Um, you... He looks like he's about half beat to death. <laughs> let's let's see if we can't crank that then. Um, oh. Can I use Hunter's Mark and still attack in the same go? I think Hunter's Mark is a bonus. Let me the cast. If it's going to take one it's a bonus extra... Action. No, it's a bonus action, so you can cast Hunter's Mark and then attack. Oh, heck yeah. Well, then I'm going to do that. Hunter's Mark and target him. All right. So it'll do five extra damage. Now, mm -hmm. um, if you want to step back and possibly draw an opportunity attack so you're not at disadvantage to shoot... Oh, no. You assumed I was going to use my longbow again? Oh, yes, I did. You're going to use the magic sword. I have uh, a short sword. <sighs> Plus one short sword. Yeah. And, the, uh, and I'm not sword. afraid to use it. All right. So let's do that now. Oh, my God. You do. I just saw that on the... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, your weapon drags across the outside of the studded leather armor, failing to cleave through and do any damage to Captain Ferg. Damn it. Uh, right, that wrecker is dead. Lance, we are to you. All right. Stepping around. Gonna All see right. if we can end this. Um, and I'm gonna once again use precision attack. We are gonna end this. So, All right. I'm using one of my superiority die. And we're on all sides now. 19. So. Yeah, you all Man. you have advantage. Wow, the longsword sings out, cutting into Ferg's armor, opening up another deep wound. Roll damage. 10. Wow. Ferg lets out another bellow, his injured hip, and he's like, ah, ah. You can tell that he's now fighting desperately. It's no longer about proving his superiority, and it's about finding a way out. Anything else, Lance? Uh, no, I don't uh, have any more bonus that I can do right now. Yeah, Fork. <laughs> Here Can you finish it? The day. <laughs> I'm like, here we go. We've got you. This is it. This is all. We got this girl. We're gonna knock this all the way out of the park. Here we go. Healing berries. Yeah, we got the tingly berries. I go that the, the bones are not working very well, so we're gonna touch the berries this time. Maybe the berries will touch the you know the magic. I can't eat them, but I can definitely cut them. And I hit the button. That is a hit. Roll damage. Mm. Nice. That's good, right? Yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot to ask, how do you make sure that the points for the factor that I'm in a rage are actually going up? I think I've not been adding that. Oh, that's too <laughs> bad. It's <moved. laughs> It was a polite rage. <laughs> Your blade sings out, cleaving into Ferg's clavicle, nearly severing the pirate captain's head. The body Ooh. collapses over with a thud. And with that, you realize you have killed the last of the wreckers. 
Yay! You quickly restore the light to the tower, removing the cloth, and the bright light begins to fill the darkening sky outside as sunset is close to setting. You hear some voices down below, and it turns out that some locals from the town on the other side of the island had sent their own party to investigate what happened to Tobin's toe. And the commoners state that they will happily clean things up and take over care and maintaining the lighthouse as it's important to their commerce and their shipping. They thank you profusely, help you bind your wounds, and then give you lanterns to lead your uh, light your way back to the coast to your boats so you can return to the sea's favor. Returning to the sea's favor, Captain Harper is quite pleased as she looks up and she sees the light <laughs> beaming from Tobin's toe. She thanks each one of you and says, Hell, you did it. You lit it before sunset. I owe each of you a hundred gold coins. She heads into her cabin where you hear her rustling around inside of a chest and she comes out with a small bag, leather bag of coins for each of you. She hands one to Ara, kind of shrugging that she's paying Zedri's companion. She hands one to Lance, a little bemused that she's paying Zedri's employ employee. She hands one to Sin, her Marine, with a smile of pride that her crewmate did such good work. She pauses for a moment with it in her hand, looking at Mimeo. <laughs> Again, I don't really know who you are, girl. What's I did the work. Name? What's your name? The name's Mimeo. Mimeo. Well, I needed to know it so I could enter you in the ship's books. We'll read you as able sea person. And she hands you the coins. And with that, she yells to weigh anchor and the crew hops to. The square sail is dropped. And the sea's favor heads off into the middling sea. I have been DM Charlie, and I thank you all for joining me for the records written by my co-founder of DM Charlie Gaming, the talented DM Lauren.